Hello, Bob. <coughs> it's Tomas. Well, here is the video analysis from our first lesson together. I apologize for the delay in getting it to you. I think I might have told you that uh, Windows, that Microsoft decided to upgrade my computer to Windows 10 without my permission, and it just caused all kinds of grief for me. And I've just uh, been working on trying to get it back to where it works for this video analysis. And um, I have a Mac, too, that I'm thinking about switching everything over to. But that's an even bigger job, so I wanted to get this done, get it out. I got a backlog, so I'm working through it. And um, But this is some uh, good stuff from our first lesson. Hopefully we can move forward here one of these days soon. I hope you're practicing a lot and getting ready. So what we have here is your swing as you brought it to me, the initial original swing, and um, we'll watch this now, and I'll make some comments about it, and <clears throat> and uh, we'll keep it on file, of course, to compare to as we go, as we move forward. We made some good progress here in terms of the impact position and that all-important point at which the club meets the ball and uh, what happens from there. So this is called the caddy view. And it basically means it's straight on, head on. This is called the down the line view, obviously meaning toward the target. So let's watch these two swings in slow motion here and uh, so you can see them and then I'll make some analysis of them. This is the caddy view. That's the way you look now. Okay, move this back to the beginning. And here's that same swing from the back, looking down the line. You notice that one went left. You can see the ball going out here. Goes left and goes straight left. So, as you remember, the, the, the two tragic flaws that you said you had the, the biggest uh, percentage of miss hits were ones that started left of the target and kept going left on a straight line remember how I said that that was due to the path of the club Let me draw a line here the path of the club being in the same direction or perpendicular to the face of the club so that means that there was no side spin put on the ball, but the ball started right along that face line, which put it way out to the left of the target here. See, it's not quite that far, but almost. But it goes straight left. So that's the result of the club coming over the top, across the ball and having the face pointed directly perpendicular to that path as it goes through. So that's the first one. But uh, the first uh, <coughs> issue that you had, uh, let me bring in a second, um, a second picture here real quick. This is, uh, this is an example of the second issue that you have and that is the low shot, very thin shot that squirts to the squirts off to the right or usually starts at the target and turns to the right. So starting right here, let me get this bigger. Alright, so this is this shot. Same swing on the back swing. And then that over the top move. So now the club is also coming from the uh, outside. But here you can see you hit it way out at the toe, which actually opens the club face. So the club face at, at the moment of impact is pointed at the target, in this case, not left of the target, because you hit it out on the toe and it turned it to make it point right at the target. And you can see the ball starts right at the target. But then look what it does. See the ball out here? So look at that ball turn to the right. 
and very low. There's the ball there. So, so the ball's starting at the target and turning to the right. The only way you can hit that shot is to have the club face pointed at the target at the moment of impact. And in this case, it was because you hit a ball out of the toe. And so instead of being closed like your normal uh, swing the time before, it's hit out on the toe and opened that club face enough to point right at the target. But it, the but the club path, as you can see, the path is going across here, like that, not at the target. So the club face is pointed right at the target, and the club path is going left of the target. That imparts a left tilt or a right tilt on the ball, causing it to start right at the target and then turn to the right. And of course, he also hit it a little thin. And so that kept it really low. So those you told me were the two issues that you had. So let's take a look at this swing and um, analyze them from both points of view. See what we got here. So I'm gonna put a little um, I'm gonna put a little cage around uh, around you over here so that we could see how your body moves. So, and that's your, uh, this is your upper center, your, usually defined as the head, it's actually the thorax, which is the Adam's apple, but, but um, this is, we always look at the head to show what's going to happen during the swing. So, let's see what happens as you swing here. Notice how your whole body moves to the right, not up at all, but to the right. A lot of people move up at the same time. You stay down pretty good, but you see that instead of instead of tilting to the left to keep your head centered, you just stay, stay bent over, and that causes your whole body to move. Weight, weight over onto the right side, your whole body moves uh, back. And then you can see that you stay your, your weight stays over here on this side as you swing down. You see, you're losing all the weight on the left side, and your weight is staying on the right side. See, that's going to cause, that's, and you see the club is closed here, so it causes it to shoot off to the left. But you see where your head is. Now, you do notice that from this point forward, your head stays pretty steady. So in this portion of the swing here, your head stays pretty steady. But we would like it to stay steady at the place where it starts. Then you don't have to worry about, see, because moving it off center like that, you're going to go to a different spot every time. And remember, my teaching is designed to make it easiest to be consistent and to not add any chaos to the movement of the swing. So as you move your head and your upper center to the right like that, it's first of all, it's going to cause this weight shift, and secondly, it's going to cause it to, you, you're never going to do it the same um, multiple times in a row. It would be best if we just kept that, that head centered over the ball and, and, and then transferred the weight to the left side as you came through. You see this, this is, this is what we call the, the chicken wing effect. You see at impact here, change the color. And at impact here, you can see what happened is that, uh, you know, because you move the center of the swing, uh, you never know where the club's going to hit the ground. You just move the whole center back, so li likely it's going to hit the ground in back of the ball because the whole the whole swing center moved to the back. And so your body reacts by not wanting to crash the club into the ground. And it bends this arm, flips the club, that turns the face to the left. Uh, you lose all sorts of power. Usually pull the ball or slice the ball, which both of which you do. And, of course, you have this chicken wing effect then on the follow-through where everything gets all bunched up. All because your body is reacting. It's an amazing thing 
mind-body coordination is an amazing thing. It reacts to the fact that it knows that potentially you're going to hit the ground really hard. And so you pull up like that with your left side. And that causes all of those difficulties that you're having pulling to the left and low slices to the right. So we'll work on those. I'll leave this here for a second. And then over here now, let's look at a, uh, a line that goes uh, straight up the club through your hands and theoretically through your waist, which is, does very good there. And then also one that goes up through your shoulder. Now that's the normal, what we consider to be the normal swing plane in which the club and the hands should swing in order to uh, in order to uh, stay on plane and make and make the swing easier to repeat every time. Now notice we also talked about the fact. Let's go back to red here. We also talked about the fact that your uh, foot line, look at your foot line where it's aimed. <laughs> that's, here's the target line right there and that's where your feet are aimed over here. So uh, we talked about this and we straightened it out a little bit in terms of uh, getting you to aim a little bit more toward the target. And uh, But here uh, because you're aimed way over here your body knows it has to come out over the top in order to hit the ball at the target. So as we swing back here, you notice you come back really low, very, very low. And then you do this big loop around to get back and then into the into the proper swing sequence, into the proper uh, swing plane there. And then that causes the, the club to come from the outside across. See, so you're, you're actually aimed over here, but you're coming you, you, your body knows that, so it's coming out and across and back over that way. And that cuts across the ball, tilts the spin to the right, and that causes that ball to go out and return to the right out there. So, um, all of these things are things that we're going to work on eventually, some of which we have already started to work on. Um, your head movement here, from an up and down point of view, It stays pretty steady from a from moving up and down. Moves up a little right, right at the top there. Moves up a little, but not much compared to a lot of people. You can see that you do move back a little bit. You see now the bill of the cat, the head of the, your forehead is right against the wall there, and then over here you move back quite a bit. All of these things add chaos to the swing, so changes where the club's going to hit the ground, and that's all the stuff that we're going to work on to try and keep it really simple. The more simple it is, the easier it's going to be to repeat every time. Okay? You can see how all your weight here at the end is on your right side, and it really should be on the left side. So, we're going to work on that really hard, on transferring that weight. Okay? Alright, so there you go. see this this hand path if I draw a circle around the hands every time So that's all stuff that's very difficult to repeat every time. So we're going to try and make it a lot more simple for you to repeat it every time. Just erase a few of these here. And I'll show you that this is, this is more like what we would want here. So if this, I'm just going to play this in reverse. If this was your backswing and this was your downswing, look how much simpler that looks. That's your backswing. 
That's your downswing. Backswing, downswing. It's simple. It's a simple swing. Boom. So we're going to work on, work on getting rid of this. Whoa. And that little hole there. And instead, just come up. And then, oops, you just come up. Cool, huh? All right, so uh, let's look at. Oops, let's look at uh, some other things here. Put this, uh, put this back in perspective here. Let me get back to the beginning. Put all these. Uh, Okay, here's the one we want. Alright, so we brought out the impact bag in order to see if we could stop this flipping motion here. And I showed you what this impact bag would do for you. Uh, I just, we were, we were working on the drill where we did just a short little swing. So, the weight went over to the left side, which is completely opposite of what it is here. Weight's over on the left side. And then we just take the club back a short way and into the bag. Okay. You're waiting for me here, Jim. Let's get this going. Alright. Put it on the left. Then just a short little swing into the back. hits the ball right here, where the ball would normally be, right there, right there. Look at this now. Look at this line. So, that's a beautiful, beautiful straight line, straight down. Your hands are in front of that line. Look at versus this one. Your weight's over on the left side, as opposed to bunching up like this. Look at that. That's, that's, that looks like a golfer here, okay? The uh, issue with this is that your whole body has moved forward now at the same time. So we prefer to keep this head back here where it started as opposed to moving forward. Because as you move forward, it's going to move this and, uh, the low-point swing forward as well. So I got in there and, uh, excuse my back here, but wait, let me go. So at this point, I let you swing. Me holding your holding your head to keep it from going forward, and this time, see, and to and to do that, you got to bend to the right here after you re 
huge impact. You gotta, you, your body has to bend to the right. So here you go. There. See? See your body bending to the right to keep your head steady. So at right there. See that? See? Just bend to the right right here. Like that. That's what keeps your head over the ball as opposed to moving forward. That's why we call it second tilt. This is the tilt to the right as you come through the ball to keep your head. All of this is designed to keep your head steady over the ball and to eliminate all of the um, issues associated with moving parts that shouldn't be moving. So um, this looks great here, right? So um, so that's that. So um, and then the other thing that we worked on here that was good. That's good. Keep going here. Right? Then I showed you how the ball just gets in the way. If I'd get out of the way, it'd be a lot easier. But <laughs> I guess I didn't. But the ball basically just gets in the way. So that now, when you do this, you do the same exercise with the ball. Just hit this little shot. Weight on the left, hands forward right at the inner thigh, the handle in front of the uh, ball and the club head. And then look at that weight going forward. I love that. Really, really good. Head holding steady. Look at that. Look at that. Now I'm going to put this, put this uh, little guy here around your head again at this point. Now watch this. That's the one. Look at that. Look at that, huh? And you can see at impact, or almost close to impact, look at that. Look at that line. Now, how do you like that? Look at the difference between those two. <laughs> Which one would you rather be? Which is the golfer? This is a golfer right here. You haven't moved your head off the ball at all. Your weight is over on the left side. This is training you for what impact ought to feel like. In fact, I'm going to take a still of that because that's a beautiful looking, uh, that's a beautiful looking. So, um, did a snapshot of that. Comparison, look at that. This is the old you. This is the beginning of the new you. All right. That's fabulous. Fabulous. Really nice. Now, the one thing that happens is that this right at impact or just slightly after impact, your hands do break down again. See, see, right after impact, right before, this is nice, but right after impact, your hands do break down a little bit too early. We'd prefer to have this go all the way out into this area with the, with the hands still in front of the club head. So you're having a problem with that, and a lot of that comes from this first move that you make here with your wrists. You see the way your wrists cock here. So I spend a lot of time in this section of the lesson trying to get you to feel like you're just moving your, your whole shoulders and arms and everything in one piece toward the back. Okay? So let me get rid of those lines again. And, um, and We'll, we'll take a look at what that looks like then from moving everything toward the back. So here we go. So I'm showing you here how it looks as opposed to this is the way you're doing it here. Oops. The way you're doing it here. You see the way I'm flipping my wrists right here? Flipping my wrists, that's the way you're doing it little exaggeration, but you get the idea that's the way you're doing it, as opposed to, as opposed to taking it straight back, like this, that's you, that's you flipping, as opposed to this, all your weight's on the left side, and you just take the club straight back, look at, see, that's the way you take it back, without your wrists hinging. This is the way the drill is supposed to work. Now remember, this is a drill. It's just designed to tell, show you what impact is supposed to feel like. So if you do it correctly, you're going to get back to impact the same way. See? That's 
that's the way it works. And then the impact. That's the way it works. And then impact. Boom. And so all the weight on the left. So that's the way the drill is supposed to work, okay? And so we worked then a little bit more on you as opposed to as opposed to cocking your wrist when you take it back, moving it straight back. Okay, so I'm going to bring in the next one because this one here, because we it took a little bit more work to get us to get us to where you were taking it straight back. So so we did the impact bag again, and then. Now there's no, now at impact, look at that at impact, so there's a straight line, and then there's still a straight line, still a straight line, so that's the way it's supposed to work, through impact, no flipping, all the way through, like that, perfect, perfect, get that feeling, man, get that feeling, that's the feeling. So, let's see. So, at this point, we're looking like this on the on the drill. Great setup position. Weight on the left, hands forward in the club, and now. Still just a little teeny bit of wrist movement here, see, but mostly mostly your whole body is turning as one piece. And this makes it easier for you to keep from flipping when you get back. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's fabulous. Look at that. Boom. Huh? How's that for a difference? <laughs> oh, let's put your head in there too at the same time. This is fabulous. What a great what a great uh what a great analysis this is. Look at the head staying right there. Look at that one. Look at the difference between those two. It's beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. You're a great student. You learned that pretty fast. So I hope you've been working on that and practicing that because that's going to make a huge, huge, huge difference. Huge difference. Okay? Once again, I'm trying to show you here that it's just a movement. It's not. It's not a cocking of the wrist here like this. Oops, that. It's not. It's not that. It's not that. That. See where you're cocking your wrist. It's more like this. You can even see it better from the back. It's just a straight movement back. Both arms straight. Okay. Both arms straight. And then through. Shot at it here. And if you can get it to go, I think at this point you, we, we, we worked on getting those hands to go back straight with the arm straight and no wrist. But you see, you're just you, you're still doing just a little bit of wrist, but mostly that's way way better. Look at that's way better. And then it makes it much easier. Look at that with the ball in there, huh? Look at that. That's fabulous. That is fabulous. Look at that. Your hands are in front of the line from your shoulder down. That is really, really good compared to this. Look at this, which is the golfer here. Come on. This looks fabulous. And remember, those balls are going out, and they're all going to the same spot. Not one of them was turning to the right, as you re may remember. I hope you remember that. Not one was turning to the right. And, uh... The, 
this is this is very interesting because notice we draw this uh, this foot line in again where you're aiming right out here. That's where you're aiming. That's where your foot line is. Now watch what happens. This is that short little swing. Watch this. Oh, that looks so much better. Boom. Look at where it goes. Look where the ball goes. <laughs> out that cause chaos in the swing every time and just get it down to the simple <clears throat> the simple moment of impact the truth the moment of truth it's going to be so much easier to repeat every time so this is the same same setup same little shot and go ahead swing Same result, right down the line, right in the same spot. There's the ball, boom, <laughs> right on target. So I think, as I recall, you hit about uh, like uh, four or five of those in a row. So really, really nice, nice going. That was great. I hope that you've been uh, practicing that and working on it. And um, and that was a great, that was great progress, great progress. So. Um, um, Let's keep it up, and I'll be anxious to start working on a fuller swing next time. If you've mastered that uh, moment of impact, then we can start adding some power to the swing and teaching you how to do that without moving all those parts around. It's a much easier thing to do when you uh, keep it simple. So uh, take a look at this, practice some, give me a call, let me know when you're free to uh, move on to the second lesson. Okay, Bob. Nice to uh, start working with you. I look forward to continuing. Bye-bye.